Submerged Resource Center videographer Brett Seymour, diver Jim Nims, dive officer Kelly Moore, and diver Dan Brown are all part of the dive team today, and we thank them for their efforts. Scott Pulowski is our, our Pearl Harbor National Memorial Museum curator. He will be the, the other voice that you hear on the presentation today, along with Billy Crow. So with that, today's program is led by Pearl Harbor National Memorial Park Ranger Billy Crow. Billy is also a veteran service member who served for three years in the U.S. Army as part of the very distinguished 100th and 442 Division, and we thank Billy for his service. Now, without further ado, I will hand you off to Park Ranger Billy Crow and Museum, Scur Museum Curator Scott Kowalski for our live dive program. Billy, have a great dive. I hope everyone enjoys the program. Take it away, Billy. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate it, and I hope they enjoy it as well. Welcome, everyone, to the USS Arizona Memorial 2023 Live Dive. Arizona was launched as one of the first oil-burning Pennsylvania-class Super Dreadnought battleships in 1915. We're going to start here in the galley. And this is an oven base that I'm hanging on to right now. The galley was a very important part of the ship. Uh, this kitchen made thousands of meals a day. Bakers and cooks uh, worked extremely hard. It was an incredible production. Um, they had streams of hungry men coming in at all hours of the day and night. Uh, looking for food, obviously they had three uh, meals a day, but uh, again, hungry men coming in at all hours uh, of the day and night, and it was quite a production. The, the junior enlisted, um, the junior enlisted men, it's quite interesting, they would uh, have what's called a mess which was a group of men that ate together uh, and a mess was 20 men and they would have 
a mess cook that would have to uh, get all the tables and chairs out of storage. They would have to go to the scullery and get the silverware, plates, uh, bowls, all that. They would have to go to the bakery to get baked goods and then the galley to get the rest of the food. And the mess, uh, being a mess cook was quite, quite a good deal. You can make extra money being a mess cook if you work really hard. Uh, you get your mess seconds, for example. Um, they would, the, the head person would send a cup around and the men would tip out. In addition to that, they would get five dollars. Uh, five dollars extra. Um, and this is some tile here on the galley floor. Hey, Billy, uh, this is Scott. How are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. Great. Why don't you, um, uh, brush off a little bit of the uh, sediment from the tile. That's here we go. There you are. That's tile on the galley floor right there. The, the galley though was was quite an operation, like I said, and uh, the mess cooks could make extra money. If they worked hard, got their best seconds, um, and there was also uh, a whole culture around it. They had their own language. Uh, you know, snakes were snakes, tapioca was fish eyes, and there were a number of other colorful uh, descriptions and, and language. Manners were, were quite important. Uh, if you went for seconds before it was time, you know, you might get a, a fork in the hand. Um, you know, the hierarchy, it was, it was present, the, the whole etiquette and uh, manners of, of the, uh, the mess. Competition uh, on these ships was, was pretty intense. You know, friendly competition, but it even started with the mess. Uh, again, getting um, your mess seconds. Uh, but the competition on these ships uh, was intense, and it kept the fleet uh, on their toes. You know, it kept them, it kept them uh, fighting ready for sure. Uh, it was, it was pretty amazing. The morale uh, was high, although. It was a lot of young men, the, the crew of the Arizona, 90% uh, of the crew of the Arizona was under 22 years of age, so a lot of really young men. Of course, they missed home and their families, uh, but they found a lot of camaraderie and, and a lot of, uh, uh, it, it was like a family, and in many cases it was family. There were... Uh, 79 siblings. Oh, here we go. We have some, some bowls in the mess here, some soup bowls, ice cream bowls. This is actually uh, what's called the, the gedunk, just forward of where we're at. It's called the gedunk, which basically, that loosely translated means junk food. <laughs> and uh, you can get an ice cream and a soda and various uh, sweets at the gedunk. Um, and now we're moving forward here, we're, there's a, a sole of a shoe, uh, and a bottle right here, all artifacts, uh, probably left from the salvage. We're heading into the library now, um, where the men can check out a book, relax, read, you know, write a letter to, uh, to the family or, or their sweetheart, um.
know, twisted heaps of, of equipment and cable and lots of different things. All right. So we're headed up the port side, uh, headed forward, and we're going to be... We're headed to gun turret two. And this might be... perhaps. Um, the ship is also, as we swim through the ship, you'll see she's a living reef at this point uh, and home to a ton of, ton of sea life, uh, including turtles and different uh, fish species, Lua. Saw a couple big ahi the other day off the memorial. coral right there that Brett just passed through. And so we're coming around uh, gun turret two. Once they surveyed the Arizona, here we go. We're going to introduce you to uh, Mr. John Hopkins here. Diver, and he's going to tell you about the Mark V, the suits they used during the salvage in 1941. Then take it away, John.
Nobody uh, realized that they were still here until uh, the Park Service started surveying the ship in the early 80s. Um, they're massive guns, 14 inch, to fire an 1100 pound projectile nearly 20 miles. See, in, in Arizona was modernized uh, between 1929 and 1931, and they added aircraft, Kingfisher aircraft, uh, that were spotter planes uh, to help adjust fire with these guns. But these barrels are 52 feet long, uh, just, just massive. Estimated half a million gallons in those tanks. 
Uh, and they don't estimate that those will leak until the year 2250. And that's a conservative estimate. Uh, and they will do something about that at some point, I believe, uh, in the distant future. But the oil that leaks out today, there's nothing that can be done about it. And its effect on the health of this harbor uh, is, is negligible. Um, the harbor's in better shape today than it, than it was when the Park Service started surveying it. And if you look at the photos that the Park Service took uh, when they first started surveying the ship in the 80s, um, it's, I'm happy to say that it's, it's, it's held it out here for quite a while and uh, there's, there's more fish and turtles and, and sea life, um, which is awesome. Uh, this is 